evening, everybody. My name is uh, KW2, and I will be sharing the uh, the topic on postal voting. Okay, and next slide, please. Okay, the table of contents for this uh, training is the type of postal voters. What is uh, Form 1A, Form 1B, and Form 1C? The evolving history of postal voting since 2003. Uh, reasons for the, rec for, the for the rejection of uh, postal voting application. And lastly, uh, observing the issuance of uh, postal ballot. Next, please. <clears throat> so, for postal voters, there are two types. There are the local voters and the overseas voters. Next. Local postal voters are absent voters, which is basically the military. Then the EC officers, election workers, media workers, and lastly, the uh, security and health sector. Next. And overseas postal voters are the civil servants and spouses, the full-time students and spouses, and private citizens. Okay. Next. Now, what is the def uh, according to the uh, <coughs> registration of electors two zero zero two? There, it, there's this term called absent voters, and who are they? The local absent voters are the military. All the branches of the military. You have your army, navy and Army, Navy, and Air Force. Overseas are the civil servants and the spouses, and your full-time students and spouses. Okay. okay, now I'm going to into this Form 1A, Form 1B, and Form 1C. These three forms are the, are the forms for the postal voters to apply for the postal vote. Okay. For Form 1A, you have the local absent voters, which is the police and the military. Then you have your EC officers. Then you have the election workers and media workers. If you can zoom in and see, you can see that there is the Angota SPR, Angota Police, Angota uh, Tantra, and uh, then you have the uh, election workers and then the, the media workers. Next. Now, this is, I think, so this is the most important. This is Form 1B, the, the form where private citizens overseas can apply to the postal voters. I will go into the criteria for being a postal voter. Okay? And uh, <coughs> any private citizens can apply for postal voters except if they stay in Southern Thailand, Singapore, Brunei and Kalimantan. This was previously. Okay. Then next, please. Next. Ah. Then in GE14, EC added another nine agencies, what they call the uh, health and security sectors. You have the prison department, you have the health department, immigration department, 
police reserve, civil defense, national registration department, fire and rescue department, maritime enforcement agency, and lastly, national disasters management agency. Next. Then you have another set called the absentee voters. These are the overseas civil servants and spouses and the overseas full-time students and spouses. Next. Okay, now we go into how do you apply for postal vote uh, for a private citizen who is staying overseas, except, as I said just now, I repeat, except Southern Thailand, Singapore, Kalimantan, Brunei. For all these five, four places, previously, they have to come back to Malaysia to vote. Okay? And EC will announce via Gazette and media statement the opening and closing gates. Opening gates usually is few days after the dissolution of the parliament or the state assembly. Okay. And closing dates, sometimes it runs from two weeks to about 16 days. It all depends. It's all within, uh, it's all uh, within the control of the election commission. Okay. And postal voters can download the form B at a specific SPR website, complete them, and return to the residing officer via either online, mail, or fax to reach before the closing date. And the RO will reply whether the application is approved or rejected. Next, please. Next. Uh, Okay, now talking about this evolving history of the postal voting. Everybody previously knows that you only have one form called the Form 1, where you apply to be a postal voter. Okay? So you can see from here, 2003, that is the postal voting regulation. Okay? And then in 2012, there is an amendment on the change of the regulations on the classes of the postal, uh, the postal voters and also the Form 1. Ah, this is the most important. There's an amendment in 2013 where there is the changes to the regulation 3 replacement of Form 1 with Form 1A, Form 1B, and Form 1C. Okay? And also uh, updating the approval and the rejection process for the postal vote. I mean, for the, uh, for the, uh, for the postal voters application. Okay? And then that's why you see from 2013. If you look at the amendment, previously it will state that you apply with the, with the form one in the schedule. Where else in 2013, they change it to in the manner determined by election commission. Okay. And in 2017, you have the addition of the nine postal. Uh, Postal uh, Voters uh, Agency. So you can see that's how it evolved from Form 1, then you have the Form 1A, Form 1B, and Form 1C. And all they need to do is just change the wording to say in the manner which is determined by the Election Commission. 
Then in 2021, for the two recent state elections, uh, EC has allowed residents staying in Southern Thailand, Singapore, Brunei, and Kalimantan to apply as postal voters. This is the first time that the EC has allowed the these postal voters from these four areas, four regions, uh, to be postal voters. Next, please. Ah, they can see. Uh, they can apply via Form 1B. Okay. Next. Now, this is the reasons for the rejection of the postal voter uh, application form 1B. Okay. This is stated in the STR uh, str.government.my under undi post. Reason is not a citizen, not a registered voter, and lastly, does not comply with the uh, condition of not less than 30 days in Malaysia within five years before the dissolution of the state assemblies or parliament. Next. Now, who are the persons entitled to be present during the issuance of the postal ballot papers? They are the RO and his team, the candidate, election agents, and EC officers. Next. Now, okay, now we go into the materials huh, uh, available during the assurance of the ballot paper. Firstly, is it's just like any other salon, right? Which is, you have the uh, clerk one who has the uh, electoral roll of the postal voters. You have a list of the postal voters, okay? Then you have, uh, they have a ruler and it's the same. They will just read out the name, the bilangan number, and also the IC number of the uh, postal voter. Okay? Then they will cross out the postal voter from the electoral roll. Okay? And then after that, they will pass to then the, uh, what is that? The part two will issue the valid paper will chop the ballot paper and issue it to the, uh, the uh, Clark 3. And what does Clark 3 have? Clark 3 has this form, Form 2, which is a declaration by the uh, identity of the, uh, this step, identity of the voter. Okay. And on this form too, there is the ballot paper which is issued for this particular uh, voter. The serial number is stated on this form too. Then, the, once the voter receives this, he or she has to fill it up and follow the relevant instruction. Next, please. As I say, firstly, you have the ballot paper, then you have the form two. They'll fold the ballot paper and fold the form two, insert the ballot paper into envelope A. And on envelope A, the serial number of the ballot paper is also stated on the envelope A. Okay, next. Next, 
Okay, then, oh, sorry. Then you have the envelope B. So the form two and the envelope A with the ballot paper folded in, inside the envelope A will all be inserted into envelope B, which is a self-addressed envelope to the returning officer of the constituency. Okay. Then they'll pass it to the clerk four, and the clerk four will uh, put it into a main envelope, then they will dump it and uh, put it aside to be uh, uh, put it into a main envelope addressed to that voter. Okay, then they put it aside to be sent to that voter. Okay, and then uh, uh, that's all. Thank you.